Well, I've been working on something for uh, a friend. That's his um, his transformer that I had been delinquent in getting repaired because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. I needed to put in a that center part that holds up the throttle spindle. Uh, his has been broken out by the shipper, just completely busted right out of the middle. So I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. Um, and I wanted to repair it because you can see he's got gauges and he's already put the on off in. So um, I came up with a plan that seems to be working out. I designed this part, as you can see there, and I made one. And um, I put it, I put it over the existing housing, sort of like that. Actually, I wanted it like that, I think, or that. I forget how I'm gonna do it. But in any case, it goes like that, and then that sticks in. That's pretty neat. Um, then I have the shaft that goes in for that, and and it's pretty much the same idea as you can see from here. Uh, then the challenge was making all of the parts work on the good side. Oh me, this is awkward. Anyway, um, now I'm on the good side, you see. The shaft is sticking up. I have room for the spring in my little housing there. And the retainer and everything will fit just fine. Now what I'm doing is I'm sketching in, and really sketching with a pencil, the notches that go in to clear the knob as the knob fits in and rotates. So I'm going to mark those in, and rather than trying to draw in them geometric, <laughs> rather than trying to put them in there initially, I think I'm going to make one hand by hand uh, following the template and um, and do a test fit with that and then if I like it I can enter those in that information and uh, and then we'll print a new one okay I'm very pleased with the fit so far um, I, I put in a couple you know just a little bit of clearance and it seems to be really snug really nice um, the other thing that I like was how this shaft fits that was a measured dimension I put it in I added just to maybe a 0.5 maybe less millimeters and it's just a really snug fit there's hardly any slop fits tighter than the factory one by the way um, okay so we're getting that figured out then I was worried about fastening it in and um, I had come across these inserts brass threaded inserts and I'd used them on a few places and I thought you know I wonder if I could put a brass insert through the back of that. And I did a test. I put some material together and I just screwed the screw in and it holds tight. It really will not pull through. Um, I just used a um, soldering iron. I positioned it where I wanted it. Put the soldering iron tip right inside the, right inside the um, insert, the threaded insert. And my golly, it really take, it didn't take long at all. Melted right through. Uh, I'm going to increase the thickness so that I have a full thickness of plastic because it's on the back side. There's nothing here, really. Nothing hangs down below any of this. So I'm going to make that another thousand uh, or a couple of millions, <laughs> a couple of millimeters. So it'll be four millimeters thick on that flange. And that'll give us a little more beef as well. Uh, but you know, for fixing a damaged house, I wouldn't have done it if it had been a 13B or, you know, 15B, I mean, or something less exotic. But this with the dual gauges, and it's in really good condition, and I hated that. So what I'm hoping when I get, when I get done is we just have these guys where they're supposed to be, right? Uh, get them on. Uh, they go in there somehow. Okay. And then this guy where he's supposed to be. And and yeah, you're going to see the head of this screw. It's stainless, by the way. So I can polish it if I wanted to. Or paint it flat black, I guess. 
But I'm going to put four of those screws in here to hold that up. So you're going to see those screws, but everything else is going to be just as original as I can make it. Uh, and I think it'll work just fine. He chipped off another piece on the inner flange, um, but I've made a, like a tooth repair, you might say. Called it a throttle bushing repair, and that is going to slide onto, if I can focus this thing a little better maybe, I don't know, I don't know, it's there. Um, it would, um, it will Fill, I'll fill that notch in that's broken out. It's like chipping a tooth and then you're putting a cap on it. Um, and then I slide this down with epoxy, okay? And I'm pretty sure that's going to stay because this doesn't really get a lot of forces and a large part of it is still there. And I am going to be reinforced by wrapping around the rest of it. So I'm hoping that I can epoxy, fit this in and epoxy it in place and it stays and then I can just smooth it out. And then that'll fit in nicely. Uh, I know everything else fits. Uh, if I had these holes in here, this thing would slide right through. I just know it. So, um, oh, sorry, I wasn't showing you what I was doing. Um, that would slide right through, okay? So I'm pretty sure that would be great. Um, anyway, that's where I'm at and where I'm doing. And right now I'm printing the little part. Although it looks kind of big from here. I don't know. I guess, I guess that is a big... I guess that is a big, I have to go around that part. So it, yeah, it's going to be that big. I don't know. I, I checked my dimensions. <laughs> I don't know. This part came out looking huge. And when I brought it over, it fit like a glove. So I feel really good about that. First one, first time I printed it, it fit like a glove. That's pretty exciting. These are big round parts. So they're pretty easy for CAD to do. Uh, that's why I decided this was the way to try to repair this for this guy anyway that's the story i'll put it up and you guys can check it out and we'll keep following me and maybe we'll get it running